meeting on the coming planning commission and we'll begin with a few introductory comments. Uh, as stated last time, please make sure your cell phones are turned off. Any final action taken on a conditional use permit uh, request will take effect to five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal uh, of the planning commission's decision is filed in the planning office by Monday, December 3rd, 2014 at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, a decision will be referred to the county commission for a hearing on Tuesday, December 16th at 9.15. The preliminary subdivision plan will be heard uh, at that same meeting on the 16th. Final action taken on it, the text amendment, which we have before us tonight, will be heard on January 6th. That's a little change for those of you that might have uh, gotten these notes handed out previously. So that'll be January 6th for the text amendment. Uh, at this time, the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda. The minutes, minutes from the October 27th meeting are included in that. Are there any objections from the Planning Commissioners to uh, any of the mem uh, items listed on the consent agenda? I'd just like to have num item 5 put on the regular agenda first, just because we don't have those very often. Okay. Any others? I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I'd like to hear staff on number seven. So I'd like to move five, uh, number seven then as well. So five and seven to the regular agenda. All right, then um, what I will do next is read the items on the consent agenda. And if any of you in the audience, uh, on the consent agenda will move really quickly. So if you want to have testimony and opportunity to speak about it, raise your hand when I read your item and we'll make sure it gets moved to the regular agenda. So the first item is the uh, minutes of our last meeting. I'm sure those are very exciting to you. Uh, the second item is the conditional use permit 14-51 to transfer a building eligibility. Uh, this is a location is 47231 254th Street and that's approximately 3.5 miles northeast of Crooks. Item number three is a conditional use permit 14-52 to transfer one building eligibility and this is approximately two miles northwest of Garrettson. Item number four, this is zoning text amendment 14-05 to amend section 7.04 of the 1990 revised zoning for Minnehaha County. Any uh, one want to discuss that? All right, that stays on the consent agenda. Number five is being moved. Number six would be on the consent agenda unless there's concerns, and that's a conditional use permit 14-53 to transfer one building eligibility, and this is located at 45867 or 66th Street, and that's approximately six miles southwest of Hartford. Number seven I've asked to be pulled to the regular agenda uh, on the consent agenda at this time is number eight, which is a conditional use permit, 14-55 to allow a manufactured home <coughs> on, a on a property that is located at 48628 253rd Street, and that's approximately uh, I think that's one mile east, uh, or it's on the east edge of Garrettson, excuse me. Those are the items on the consent agenda. I didn't see any objections, so with that, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Moved. Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Well, sign, same sign, the motion carries on the consent agenda. Now, if your item was one of those that I just read was on the consent agenda, you're free to go or stick around for the time if you'd like. There may be a, a spot available on this commission next year if you guys want to. <laughs> Thank you. Getting them all the getting is good, actually. I'll move them out. <laughs> number five, then, Scott. Okay, number five is a preliminary subdivision plan. Um, this is a uh, plan uh, to create seven separate tracks. Uh, consisting of approximately 144 acres. The property is located northeast of Brandon, and it's located at the intersections of East Redwood Boulevard, uh, North Chestnut, and Interstate 90. And this is a little bit different than we typically deal with subdivision plans because uh, the applicant is doing this as sort of an estate cleanup uh, situation. Um, they're I'll show you, a, uh, this is the subdivision plan as it sits, and uh, they will all be farmed. The parcels are gonna be farmed. There are two building eligibilities located on this entire parcel. There's one that is here that is 
uh, available. And then there's one that's over here that is by conditional use. There's a, a there is also a third track that they're platting that was down in here at about 14 acres that did not have a building eligibility on it. So on the entire 144 acres, there are two building eligibilities, and we will work uh, with the <coughs> excuse me the applicant to determine what track they want to put that on, and then they tell us we assign it to that track. And then if they want to move it, they would have to move it yeah. just like they would with any other building eligibility. But at this point, we uh, put it on, we will assign it to whatever track they want in that, okay. on that parcel in that quarter section. Mm -hmm. And one of them would still be by conditional use if they, for approval. Um, there, uh, we, when we review a preliminary plan, we go through the subdivision uh, regulations and we review a number of things to make sure that um, that the subdivision plan has legal access, that there are infrastructure that's, if any infrastructure is needed, that they show us what that is, they, that they provide engineered road plans. This situation is sort of unique because they're not really indicating any interior roads. There are no new roads. All the parcels are going to have access off of, those, off of uh, Chestnut and Redwood, with the exception of of uh, there's two lots, uh, tracts uh, two and six, which are being provided uh, legal access through what appears to be an easement, and I noted that in the um, in the st in the comments that if you look right here, there's a dotted line that provides access up to track six and up to track two, but they never they didn't really indicate on the plat that it's an access easement. They just showed a dashed line, and so that has to be corrected on the final plat. And um, we're recommending approval with uh, of the preliminary plan with set to allow the seven tracks with that one condition, that prior to the county commission approval, uh, the 66-foot area extending from Eastwood, East Redwood Boulevard to tracks two and six must be identified as uh, some kind of legal access, either a private access easement or private roadway, or if they're going to dedicate it as a public road, that's also, um, they can also dedicate it as a public right-of-way, but typically they'll indicate these as a private access easement. It is within the Brand it, City of Brandon's platting jurisdiction, and they've already signed off on the plat. Uh, no one uh, at the City of Brandon caught the easement thing, so... Um, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. I do have a couple pictures. I mean, it's all just farmland. Yeah, I have a question, Scott. Yeah. Before we get, I've seen the pictures. I know where this is. I mean, it's right east of there. You see it from the highway. Uh, okay, so this is a quarter of land. It has two eligibilities. Why is he entitled to five additional eligibilities, which There's are worth about $250,000? He's not getting eligibilities. If you're setting a track, does that not come with the conditional no. use permit? No, we, we plat properties all the time um, that have no building building eligibilities. Okay, that was that was why I was, I was confused on this. I'm thinking, okay, so why are we platting this up? Why do we care how it's, he draws it, that it's up? It's primarily for transfer of ownership. Okay, but why do we care about that as planning and zoning? If there's no, as long as they only have no, there's only two eligibilities on that land. It's up to you how you figure it out, folks. Yeah, that's, that's our a, problem. That that that's exactly where we are. It's basically a state planning, and they're dividing this up among well, heirs. I care less about the heirs and all that. That's that's their problem. You know, you see everybody else forties and all that. Especially if you go to Northwest Iowa, you see quarters of land split up into forties with all the kids' names on. And all that. But when you want to plant these tracks, they have to bring it to planning. Yeah. So because this is because they're planting a, a larger number of them, um, it's so the required. next thing they'll come back and say, "Oh, we should really get a house on this." Thing. Well, there's no building eligibility. They may, want, may they may think they want one, but there's. But guess no who usually will say yes to that? An elected body that we tend to deal with every once. Well, there's oh, it's right next to Brandon. Oh yes, go ahead. Why not? <laughs> well, that's what we deal with. I understand that's what that's what uh, that you that's your perception, but it, it this happens all the time, um, Commissioner Cipher, where we divide up properties into several parcels, and they may not have building eligibilities. I, I, I guess I was about, that we had to even deal with that. Pardon me? And it's just a private transfer that does... No, we, you, you don't see them. I deal with them every week. We do about 
three or four plots a week. I do. I review them internally. If they're less than three lots, then typically we just admin we administratively approve those as a basically a minor plat is what we would call it. But because this goes over that threshold of what would be considered a few lots, it's seven, which is no longer f a few lots. Right. It's required to have a preliminary plan. Well, I guess from a density zoning standpoint, my concern is okay. It still should just be two eligibilities. That's, that's all they're getting. Okay, that's fine. Two of them will have building eligibilities, which they could build a house on. Mm -hmm. The rest of the tracks have no building eligibilities and just will be used solely for ag land. Do you have other questions for Scott? Are the applicants here? Yeah. Uh, I don't see them. Move for deferral. No, I'm just kidding. Chair, uh, I honestly, though, would make a point here that we changed the ag eligibility for tax purposes uh, from 20 to 40 acres, and I see that we, we have a 36-acre tract, a 21, a 18, a, a seven, a thirty-five. All of these tracks are going to be Tax at a higher rate. rate. Tax at a higher rate. Tax, Tax at a higher rate than uh, if they were uh, uh, forty-one acres or more. I just similar to like you do with acreages. Like my place isn't considered egg. Not anymore. You know, you have a place on the driveway That's and keep a Shetland pony in the back. Yeah. It's no longer a <laughs> egg not egg. Yeah. My two hundred bushel corn didn't count this year. But you got that one acre. Yeah. Had they been here, they'd, they'd hear that. But uh, yeah. okay, yeah. I just yeah, I'm fine with it. Like I said, I just, I just want a clarification on how all that works. That just That's how different. it works. Is there anyone else that has questions or comments about this item? I had to move approval. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? If you're done, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those same side. Thanks. Thanks for pulling it. Yeah. Just in case they ever come back right Joe. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I know, I know, I know these. Right. <laughs> I've helped farm this ground for a year or two. Um, and it's, I mean, that's the way it ground lays. It just lays funny. As in, I, I think they just made it the way there's tree lines, there's all kinds okay. of tree lines. And I think they just said, well, this fence line is this, and this pasture, and little patches. I still have a chance to get out of here by 10. Yeah. <laughs> David, there's pressure there. So, uh, number seven, I wanted to hear a little bit of our thinking about this one. David Heinel, Planning Department. Item number seven, 14 54, conditional use permits to exceed 1,200 square feet of total accessory building areas. He's requesting 2,650 square feet. Petitioner's Grant Edgecombe. The property is located roughly at 26685 Day Spring Circle, which is about a mile, about a mile southeast of Well Lake. Uh, petitioners requesting uh, to construct a 40 foot by 64 foot metal pole building for personal storage. And as you can see on the site plan shown, skip forward here. The building would be located just to the northwest. This is actually north is looking to the right, so this is northwest of the house. Um, the property owners immediately to the east, if I go back one slide, the, the petitioner actually owns about four to five acres on this lot that is separated into separate tracks. The two adjacent landowners to the east have the same number of square footage, 1680 square foot. As you can see in the, these two images right here, skip forward, right, this is just a, an aerial view of what those buildings look like. As you can see, they're in their rear yard, so they'd be a little bit more difficult to see, whereas this building would be right across from their two driveways right there. Um, on November 12, 2014, staff conducted a site visit and determined that the proposed building size would be adequate for the area with regard to the petitioner's lot size. Seeing how what the, the other accessory building sizes are on <coughs> smaller lot sizes, and this one is about five times the size of some of those other lots. So in comparison to that, the petitioner also has two hoop shed, two hoop sheds in this picture, you can kind of see them faintly right along this tree line that will be removed upon construction of the proposed accessory building and was included in one of the conditions of approval. There is another building that is actually to, right here, that is actually at the, the entrance to Day Spring Circle right off the main section line road. 
to go back to that. And just some of the criteria that we go through in determining conditional use permits. Number one, that the effect upon the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for use is already permitted and upon property values in the immediate vicinity. Well, there are a few properties in the immediate vicinity that have a total accessory building area, as I mentioned, up to 1680 square feet, and the petitioner's requested size is, is roughly comparable to the other accessory buildings adjacent to the subject parcel, so there, other than that visual impairment of being right across the driveways, there shouldn't be a significant impact on property values and uh, surrounding properties. Number two, that the effect upon normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding vacant property for use is predominant in the area. The accessory building may only be used for residential purposes, so no commercial or business activities are allowed at any time. Given the size of the other larger accessory structures in the immediate vicinity of the petitioner's property, a 2,560 square foot accessory structure would be congruent with the land composi composition given um, the, different, the differing lot sizes within that area. The utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary facilities are provided. Access to the proposed structure will be pro provided off of Day Spring Circle, so no further infrastructure will be, need to be provided. That the off-street parking and loading requirements of these zoning ordinances are met. No off-street parking will be needed with the supplemental area for parking as a result of residential activities. No commercial or business parking will, will be allowed at any time. The measures are taken to control offensive odor, fumes, dust, noise, vibration, lighting, inclusive of light signs, so that none of these will constitute a nuisance. No offensive nuisances shall be permitted at any time during the use of the proposed structure, and the use of lighting should be directed downward onto the property in order to prevent the exposure of light off-site. Off and number six, the health, safety, and general welfare of the public in the comprehensive plan. The proposed accessory building should <clears throat> should have a ma should not have a major impact on the health, safety, general welfare, and the comprehensive plan. So staff finds that the requested total accessory building size is relatively comparable to the existing accessory buildings in the immediate vicinity. So staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 14-54 with the following conditions. One, that the total accessory building square footage shall not exceed 2,560 square feet. Two, that the two hoop sheds be removed upon completion of the accessory building. Three, that the accessory building shall not exceed 35 feet in height. Four, that the building shall be an accessory use to the continued use of the property as a residential lot. Five, that only personal residential storage be allowed in the building and no commercial uses or commercial storage will be allowed at any time. Six, that all outdoor lighting shall be of a full cutoff and fully shielded design to prevent direct spillage of light beyond the property boundaries. And seven, that a building permit is required prior to construction of the accessory building. And with that, I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, just have one. Have we been required, to me this is a good thing, shall be cut off light? Have we required that on these before? I think so. Yeah, I know so. We? You know, a lot of times they'll just stick one of those Galde lights on the wall that just wear out. You know, yeah, yeah, I see sure. quite a few of those on the front, and they're just obnoxious, yeah. so I'll get up. So when it is cut off, that is, that's good, that's yeah. a good thing. Okay. Can you scroll back to the um, another shot here of the uh, built up? Is there a, that's just, that is right. I, I drove by it and I'm trying to remember, there's not another outbuilding there. Okay. Those are the hoop buildings there? These are the two hoop, hoop buildings you see in white. What's that greenish thing right to the left of your course? What's that? Trees? It's like an existing shed. Yeah, so is that included? The, it's not included in your 2564, is it? It should be, shouldn't it? You can clarify the petitioners here. So okay. If you want to, you can clarify. With All right. Any members. other questions for uh, David? All these up. All right. Would the petitioner like to come forward, state your name and address, and tell us what you're doing and what that is? <laughs> Grand Edge Call, uh, two six six eight five Day Spring Circle, and I'm looking to build a storage shed. Uh, personal use shed to put my stuff in. Okay. So, and then the shed that you saw there is a 10 by 12 portable garden type shed. Uh, two big glass windows, start plants, and mm -hmm. things in there. 
and so the position of this thing is going to you've got several lots there to make up your, your sure land donation. So is this going to straddle any of the lots? I mean, uh, um, no, I have to stay within the lot line. Um, I believe it was three feet worth of measurements uh, from the. Yeah, there's several different tracks. Six so it's, seven. it's in the same one with your with your uh, home, so that you could potentially sell off those other lots someday. That's that's my hope is that you sell my retirement and yeah. then for sale. Okay. There are five lots. Okay. It, it it's not going to be on the same one as his home though. It is on a separate lot. On a separate lot. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak to this item? I guess the, uh, the can't really the reason I asked this to be pulled to the regular agenda is uh, yeah, it's quite a bit bigger than the adjacent, and they were scaling it up based on uh, additional individually planted lots of all under one ownership. And uh, whether they stay that way uh, or not, I mean, you could potentially. So on two lots here, and now have one that isn't necessarily scaled quite the same. You understand what I'm saying? Well, you, you have and then, and then I, I have the, the question on the square footage because I drove out there and I thought I saw that little utility site. So by rights, I think we need to bump that. The request up by whatever it's 144 square feet. 120. 120 square feet. So what should our motion be? <laughs> Just make well, what motion. Is it 25, 60. Is that what it was before? You got to add 120 to it. Yeah, you approve it. So it'd be 2680. 2680. 2680. So it's a full thousand feet more than the others. Which sets the precedent for this addition? Yeah. Yes, it does. You know, we'd, we'd have to we'd have to say that it's. You know, it's based on all these lots together, but we, there's no restriction that they'll retain, stay in one ownership, because they are planted so. Well, I would move uh, approval for 2680. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the uh, approval, say aye. 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 Those same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. I do right. have one item of old business. Oh, oh. Who's that name? All right. Do we have a meeting next week? Well, then, no, that's not the item of old business we're going to talk about. <laughs> um, I'm going to, uh, let me open. I'll just put this over here. All right. Uh, back in September, two months ago, we had a conditional use permit uh, by Mr. Elbers, and he was in section uh, 32 of uh, which township is the Hartford Township? Hartford, Hartford Township. And uh, he had two conditional use permits, or two eligibility, sorry, on this entire parcel. And he applied for the conditional to move one of the eligibilities, and in the conditions, it was indicated that it was going to be in the southeast of the southeast, which would be this parcel right here. And he came in this morning, and uh, there either was miscommunication on someone's part, but he'd like to have the eligibility assigned to this portion here. And I put on my thinking cap, and I think I thought that uh, the easiest way to do this is just to correct the minutes from the September meeting, and we would then indicate that that's where his conditional use permit would be assigned, which I, I, I think we are still within the parameters of, the, of what is acceptable because he did go through the conditional use permit process in September. Uh, there was no one there that was opposed to placing the conditional use permit. So if you're agreeable to that, I'd like a motion to uh, amend the minutes from the September uh, 22nd, I'm not sure what the meeting was, the 22nd. Uh, to, so move. to show it to the southwest of the Second. southwest. Second. Okay. Unless we get another 250 bucks out of him for another. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, he uh, would like to start building, and if we went through a conditional use permit process to amend this all, it would be January, and he would be out in 
the other thank there was uh, there was nobody there to object. So there was nobody we there. About it. So uh, we have a motion and a second to amend the minutes to the September meeting. Any further discussion? All those favor say aye. Aye. Those same sign that motion carried. It's the handout from thank Vince you. Jones, the one attorney. Good to go. Thank you. Yeah. Scott snuck an old one in there right in front of you, David. I think you're supposed and to. And we didn't get 250 bucks for it. Then that was the uh, that was the old business, and then uh, David has a couple of items of new business. And I think uh, Kevin has one item for the. Uh, that was your item that got appealed, wasn't it? Or was it? Never mind. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, just, I yeah. have a little update on conditional use permit 14 48 for the daytime dog training facility. The county commission voted unanimously to approve that. They didn't have any changes in conditions. Um, same, pretty much the same property owners were present that were at the planning commission hearing. And, and just another thing, as far as I, I sent out the notice for the Envision 2035 task force meeting in the chapter. So. If you have any comments or suggestions on that draft chapter, feel free to send those um, our way. If you want to attend the meeting at any point on December 4th or Thursday, 3.30 to 4.30 in this room, we welcome. As I read the narrative, I was kept thinking as I was reading it, but you, you summarized at the end all of the things that you're really kind of saying we need to do, and I thought that was a good, good summary at the end. Up front, I was wondering, okay, where's the meat? <laughs> you know, it, it, it came, so. David, will you send a reminder out next week, early in the week, maybe for, just yeah, for those probably, members on that? Because yeah. there was only that week four of, of us, December. I think, last month, and yeah. Deb and I kind of thought that we um, were missing some people, so to speak. Shannon, um, Shannon Nordstrom already said he's going to be flying to somewhere, so he's Cincinnati. He's not going to be able to attend. So we we have been getting. I mean, you get me some responses? Okay, I yeah, we've been getting some, but I, I agree. We'll send out two notice. We'll send out a notice again, and then like the day before, send out another notice. So, and then we hope we get a better yeah. turnout. The, the one thing that, that I thought of about when I was reading it when it came to what, trails and the county parks section is many, many moons ago, decades ago, I was a uh, uh, chair of the bicycle plan committee in the city. And, we had in the plan a long-term vision uh, here just some years later that you connect to, to you know, county parks, uh, and it may be that the next time we're doing something on uh, Highway 42 or West 41st that there's a bicycle lane to get out there or something like that. So just even a mention in a plan sometimes provides uh, the impetus to, to, to get things, get somebody's attention there. So you know, mention of that, I think, would be, if, if, if it's amenable with people who are on the plan, but I think connecting our county parks to the great asset that the city has inside would be great thing to do. Did, did I ever discuss with you guys the uh, flagpole uh, annexation? That yes. Yeah. Well, it, it's come up in another area with the city of Brandon. I don't know if you know this, Scott. You, you told me. Yeah. The city of Brandon, you know, has got two chunks of Brandon, and they're yeah. separated by that park, right? Right. Well, along Holly or Rice Street, whatever, they they annexed al along the, the, the road there, but they didn't annex the road, they're saying, and so they want the county to plow the, uh, the snow there. And uh, yeah. meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, like over here on the west side, you know, uh, they annexed the whole road, but they won't mow the ditch, uh, or because you know they don't do a lot of ditch mowing. Because yeah, they have meetings that people take care of. Right, and uh, we we had a meeting to look at putting in uh, safe routes to schools, I uh -huh. think. And uh, you can't put in a request for that unless the school's five years old. So they plan to bus people to McGovern uh, Middle School for the next nine years or so. And if they see a kid walking on the street, they're calling the cops. That's a good plan. They have two people that drive their kids there by car. Open enrollment, they said. Open enrollment, yeah. The rest of the people go by bus, and if they don't, we're calling the cops. Because there's no no sidewalks. There's a bridge going out there that's narrow. There's no way you could yeah. walk on that right. bridge safely. Yeah. And uh, so they don't want the kids to be killed. But, uh, Is there I mean, a street now? They should improve it. Yeah, put a sidewalk. It's not in their plan. 
It's on their plan. At least you got out from under the street. Well, at least we didn't get their building permit on that school or anything. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> it's um. What would it have been, Scott? Twenty million bucks. Uh, what's it? What? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars for the county. So the city got that. Instead. They don't get that much. They get a. They get less, but it's. They have a cap. So in case you build like the Sanford, some building, some mm -hmm. Sanford building, you don't pay more than that, so much. But so they they took our building permit. They took the stuff and they're leaving it That's unimproved. Yeah. Meanwhile, we paved La Mesa for $300,000 so that it wasn't a gravel road coming from the south out there. Really? You know, the public's not aware of that stuff. Well, they, the city's the one that's got the money. That's the trouble. Well, it's, it's really poor planning, though, yeah. to build a place out there where there are no kids mm -hmm. and where, uh, you know, they're going to have to bus them for nine years. What does that cost? Well, it's kind of like when they built Memorial Middle School. That's what they. That's what they like to point out. It was out. the same thing, and all of a sudden, the Sioux Falls started calling off school in the winter time because it's a blizzard on the west side of town. And it's nice in town, but they couldn't get the memorial. Yeah. Well, in four years, crazy. Bob Liss and I will be driving the bus out there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You guys don't know the issues the township has with the city parks in the city oh. because of the parks now that we have out oh, in the rural right. areas. Yeah. And we maintain it half the time, they maintain it half the time. Well, let's put it this way. They don't take they don't do their part. And then we have citizens. No, and then we have the arboreum over there where we're I mean the parks all around there, they've bought more land, they have the arboreum, but who's maintaining the road? Township. Why is that? When they put on all these curbs and gutters out there and they don't want us to damage them. Really? How do you do that? The maintainer. How do you do that when you can't see him in the wintertime? <coughs> you're not, to, I you, give you, up. You, you have to open up the arbor. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's pretty road. helpful. Uh, there's actually another thing that oh, came to my David's mind. David's got more, folks. I wanted to oh. entertain. Um, the, there's a capture the community of the photo, or capture the character of the community photo contest. It's basically something to help generate a vision for the future of Minnehaha County is this is for residents to submit either whether it's photographs art drawings or any other kind of media that you can think of is just to help portray some vision for the future and to help establish hopefully my end goal with this project originally when I came up with it was to help develop a vision statement for the comprehensive plan to help guide all other land use and planning decision making. So that's ongoing for another couple of months. Um, originally the deadline was December 8th, but extending that out to January 31st. So feel free to send it to Vision 2035. Is it on the county website? It's on the county website, so you can take a look at that. And it's also in the newsletter. That I was going to print out some copies of that too. We've got some copies up in the, the office, so if you'd like one, you can come up and get one of those. They're hard copies. If not, I'll get the email out. Okay. Anything else? Well, are we going to have a goodbye party for Mark as some kind of like <laughs> well, three I, day I, drunken bash? With I'll be at the county commission tomorrow, and just under item uh, under liaison report or no uh, items new old business or new business i'll get up and indicate that we do have uh, an opening and the public's encouraged to apply um last year we didn't we had not very much response so we had to actually end up beating the bushes at the end i think jeff talked to steve dick and remember that last year and we got yeah. bill then to the time before that there was like five there was but so um, uh, anyway, um, if any, if you're interested, Mark, you'll need to uh, you go on the county website, or I can email you. Uh, the you have to fill out a form, and you can email it to the commission office, and then we will sometime in December or first week in January or something look around and try and um, see who applied, and and then the c county commission decides who they want to appoint.
Oh, and there's also a vacancy on the county commission. You may want to, maybe one That's of you want to apply. Right. You see, maybe Jeff, more than one before you know it. You're holding. <laughs> So they're going to be talking about that tomorrow, right? A little bit. I think uh, there is a procedure outlined in law. And, uh, okay. So until he's actually gone, we don't elect anybody. Okay, well, yeah. there you go. See? So you just appoint. Yes. I shouldn't say just appoint. Now, if there are three vacancies, the governor appoints. But if there's uh, uh, right now, Bob Lentz will break a tie like uh, the vice president. <laughs> if, it's, if it's two to two, he breaks the tie. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have some interest? Yeah. He's the only one. Uh, yeah. We had Scott Ehrlichman came in at the that very podium and raised his hand. We've had another eight or nine people, you know, sh -sh -sh -sh. some people have their... Will there be some of this uh, bipart this partisanship going on during Absolutely. that process? <laughs> but, but you know what? But I, uh, the partisanship doesn't really bother me in this case. What I most uh, worry about is having someone that I can get along with that's yeah. and operate in good faith. Because honestly, the group we've got now, we do. We don't. Uh, well, I mean, I. Me Cindy was. <laughs> I was. Uh, I was pounding my fist about Bob, and I think I scared her a little bit. But uh, <laughs> uh, the. Um, yeah, you know, I think we all get along. Yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't get along so well with Anne Hayek. And Bob Colby and, and Carol Tweet. It was just boring. But they didn't get along with each other either. Yeah. Bob would say something and they'd all roll their eyes. <laughs> then, uh, you know, Anne would vote against you because you voted against her last time. There's none of that going on now. But, uh, I wonder if it's that way at the national level, huh? <laughs> it is that way at the national Start level. Start small. Yeah. So I'm happy to have a Republican, although uh, there are a couple of independents who would make I'm not even looking for a Democrat. In fact, I have suggested this uh, name, although he's not one of the people that has applied yet. But, you know, he's been Secretary of Agriculture. I mean, the guy, uh, you know, and the other day I asked Kevin Brown up uh, north there if he would be interested, but he says he's too busy. Uh, I don't know if you'd want Kevin Brown. Well, that's, that's the way it is, too. Well, not Kevin Brown for that, sorry, for your jobs. <laughs> oh, but Bill, even for a county commissioner, I think he'd be a good county commissioner. Seems even tempered, and uh, I'm the only bad tempered one. Right now. <laughs> well, it's going to get him wound up a little bit. I was wound, believe me. You know, uh, in the uh, when we had the canvas of the vote, they said that's not the right time to talk about it. We'll put it on the on for the next meeting, and that's where I had it out. But next week, they didn't wasn't on the agenda. So, okay, we made a mistake. We'll put it on next week's agenda. It wasn't on that agenda either. They had instead an agenda item to appoint a panel to investigate. <laughs> so that was very frustrating for me. And, you know, I, it was my fault. It was, it was my fault that the election uh, went as badly as it did because I didn't call attention to the fact that Bob... Uh, making $80,000 a year, wasn't spending any time in the office. They were making errors all over the place as far as sending out ballots and, uh, and telling people where to vote, and with no attempt to correct it. In fact, it's 100% human error when you send the person a wrong absentee ballot. But uh, you know what? Their answer was, hey, sometimes it happens. You know, try giving a guy, the wrong guy, a vasectomy. See what the guy has to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a motion to adjourn? Yeah. <laughs> Just declare it. All right. Oh, yeah. Just declare it. Chasing everybody out. David, I think this might be yours. Yeah. Is that yours?